What a lovely analogy, what a lovely description of my teaching style. Uh, unir par le mariage ou par un traité, lovely. Synonyms, combiner, combine, conjuguer, joindre. We know joindre because if you say you're going to meet somebody and it's not the first time. Donc si vous dites que vous allez retrouver quelqu'un, ce n'est pas la première fois. You say retrouver. So, oh, I just met Luke. He was absolutely cray cray batshit crazy. Oh, je viens de rencontrer Luke. Um, you know, for the first time it would be rencontrer. If it were, oh, you know, I met Luke in town, that would be j'ai... Largely, the word that we use is retrouver, retrouver. But you can also use rejoindre. Je vais rejoindre Luc. Um, marier, mêler, disjoindre, dissocier, séparer. So again, lovely, lovely antonyms, lovely, lovely, you know, synonyms, lovely, lovely, lovely. Yeah, okay, so ally, bring together, combine, mix. Back to our original then. So the 121 rooms, of which 34 magnificent suites, including 34 magnificent suites, combine, mix, blend, whatever you want to say. You can be as wank as you want. A traditional design, mixing. Um, now this is not to criticize the French. The French here is exceptionally beautiful. Ça c'est pas pour critiquer le, le français. Le, le, le français ici si, c'est bien beau quoi. I'm just saying that you can understand when you analyze the word. Je, je dis juste que quand c'est en analysant les mots that you can understand how we're using it in a slightly, you know, different way. Uh, vous arrivez à comprendre qu'on l'utilise d'une manière différente. So, um, uh, good. And I really recommend the hotel, by the way. D'ailleurs, je vous recommande fortement l'hôtel. So, tous les besoins uh, et désirs du voyageur contemporain... Non, tous les besoins et désirs du voyageur moderne sont... Make it bigger, Luke. Control plus. There you go. Tous les besoins et désirs du voyage moderne sont comblés. Ooh, do you know that word? All the needs and the desires of the, the traveler, the modern traveler, are... Comble. Now you could probably get from the sentence, all the needs and the desires of the modern traveller are met. But what does comble mean? So, and if we don't know it, we need to know it. And if we do know it, we need to know another word that does the same thing. So over we go to the um, the dictionary. Comble. Definition in red. Main read first. Remplir un creux. Un vide, une cavité de matériaux solides, uh, de manière à ce qu'il n'y ait plus... Well, now I'm going across to the definition. So you'll often see that the first line in red will then be carried on in the definition, because it's going with the number one. So, remplir un creux, un vide, une cavité de matériaux solides, de manière à ce qu'il n'y ait plus de creux, que la cavité soit pleine, etc. Combler un fossé avec de la terre. And then in the red, it's got combler sans retard, which is basically saying, look at me. I am a main expression. I am something, you know, really important. Yeah? We're saying the red is important on this website. <gasps> yeah? I'm wearing a lot of red at the moment. Je porte beaucoup de rouge. Um, comble et vide. So, uh, what are the definitions we've got? To faire en sorte qu'une manque, manque, un déficit, une lacune disparaisse. So, do something so that uh, a, a, a lack, a deficit, a gap disappears, whatever. To satisfy fully, uh, plentifully, to, to realise a wish, to grant a wish, the desire of somebody. So, vous comblez tous mes espoirs. So, it's in French, you know, you, vous comblez tous mes espoirs. You, you know, you, you meet all my hopes. What would we say? You, 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 you know, that met my, order, my, my wishes, that fulfilled, that fulfilled all my, you know, my hopes and my dreams. Uh, and then there's the fourth one, which is basically when you spoil the shit out of a kid. So, combler un enfant de cadeau. It's not, obviously, filling up a child physically with presents. That would be sick. And slightly wrong. Uh, it's then got expressions. Combler sans retard. So, basically, we learn then from the first one, what we normally see, ce qu'on voit normalement, is that the first one is the most exact, specific, literal definition. So it says, comble means to fill some shit up, fill up a hole, fill up a gap, fill up a space, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, physically. Then we start to see figurative usages. So that means like, you know, fill up a lack, fill up a deficit, as in there's no physical, physical space, but, you know, like a lack of emotion or something. Or, you know, him coming into her life filled up, you know, a person can be comble, whatever, fulfilled. So that's normally what happens with language, is it normally has the most physical, literal, you know, expression first, and then it gets a bit fancy. Then we've got the synonyms and the antonyms, boucher, bourré, colmaté, obturé, remblayé, vide would be the opposite, um, fine, 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 all good. So over to the Connaught again. Uh, 
Um, I believe it's so called because the Connaught, uh, the House of Connaught, was one of the royal families of tribal Ireland, if I'm not mistaken. Ça faisait partie des des familles royales de de l'Irlande, des tribus, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody who's Irish can can tell me. Uh, quelqu'un qui est irlandais uh, peut me dire. Uh, yeah, that's where the word Connaught comes from. Uh, because I gave this to somebody to translate this week. Um, uh, ouais, je l'ai donné, à, je l'ai donné à quelqu'un à traduire cette semaine. And they could manage, they could say the French. Ils arrivaient à dire le français, but they couldn't say the word Connaught. <laughs> um, I'm sure there's a proper pronunciation in Irish Gaelic, but uh, that's what we say in English, the Connaught. So, lovely. Uh, great then, so in other words, all the needs and the desires of the modern traveller are met, fulfilled, whatever shit you want to go with, in this in this superb interior is not only comfortable but also spacious. Let's do one more paragraph. What time of it? Yeah, so one more paragraph. Restaurants and bars. Hélène Desroses at the Connaught. Weirdly, I know of Hélène Desroses. Um, I used to teach a very, very talented chappy called Olivier. I used to teach him English. He used to work in Mayfair and a uh, French guy and lovely guy. And uh, he was busy mates with Ellen. She was one of his uh, best friends. And uh, yeah, and he used to talk very favourably about her and her food. So Ellen Darroz is a chef at the Connaught. And by all accounts, she's a lovely person and very talented. So on trouve en cuisine la célèbre chef uh, Ellen Darroz, doublement étoilée, ainsi que son équipe qui s'inspire de la cuisine. I think we've got a little expression and we've got something we can use our highlighter pen. Penfo, on a bien besoin de notre stabilo. Et des produits de saison pour sublimer des plats, faire frémir toutes les papiers. Lovely, à force de passion, de constance et de talent. Les tables du Hélène Darroze. Lovely. Now, I-double-L-E-S is a problematic thing because sometimes we have famille, which is itself a kind of corruption, uh, because ville is pronounced, uh, Lille, the town of Lille in the north is pronounced, but we'd say une fille and une famille. So if we were hypothetically to also use a feature on this website, so if I typed, uh, what's the word that I was just talking about? So if I was to type the word in, and then I press on the red symbol, j'appuie sur le symbole rouge, la symbole rouge. Papille. 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 So that gives me papille rather than papille. Because papi is like an old grandpa. So in other words, don't forget that you've got a pronunciation tool here. N'oubliez pas que vous avez un outil de prononciation. That's very useful. Ça, c'est très utile. So in red, in red to the left of the main word when it's written down in bold. OK, le mot principal écrit en noir um, ou en grand. En gros, sorry. Um, yeah. So, da, 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 uh, lovely, lovely, lovely. So, um, Hélène de Rose, on trouve, so we find in the kitchen the celebrity chef Hélène de Rose, doublement étoilé, so double starred. The starred system is referring to the Michelin guide, the, the you know, the food guide um, for good restaurants. Ainsi que son équipe. There's a video I've done on Ainsi que, but basically, il y a une vidéo que j'ai faite. Um, uh, j'ai faite, because une feminine video. Um, uh, ainsi at the beginning of sentences and so ainsi at the end of the sentences like that ainsi que is basically as well as you know so as well as ainsi que son équipe qui s'inspire de who are inspired by regional cuisine okay so notice the reflexive so we've got a highlighter s'inspirer de that's an ABC verb using my method alright that's a re- re- that means a pronominal verb a reflexive verb um um which which then uses the preposition. So qui s'inspire? Notice when I say pronominal verb, I accept that some pronominal verbs are reciprocal, but if I just say reflexive, you know what I mean. It's not strictly the same, but you get it. C'est pas strictement la même chose, mais vous enfin vous captez quoi. So qui s'inspire de la cuisine régionale et des produits de saison pour sublimer, sublimer. Do we know what sublimer means? Do we know what sublime means? Ooh, c'est sublime. We go across to sublimer. Go across. Uh, five minutes left if I want to do a three-parter. So let's type sublimé. Faire subir la sublimation. 
that's not going to help you if you didn't know what sublimer meant. Okay? Transposer, transposer en quelque chose de pur, d'idéal. So it's basically to purify, to make ideal. But basically, it's kind of become synonymous with, yes, yeah, so magnifier, purifier, transcender. It's kind of become synonymous with a fancy ass way of saying really make good. Pure, a purely good version of something. So it's kind of like improved, basically. Um, back we go. Um, et des produits de saison pour sublimer des plats. So in other words, to kind of like really refine, refine, you know, um, dishes. À faire frémir toutes les papilles. So basically, this is our causative, to make frémir. If we were to look up frémir, go over to the dictionary. Frémir. You always have frémir and gémir. They always come together. Especially in sexy books. Uh, uh, ok. S'agiter avec un bruissement vibré. Yeah. Uh, les feuilles frémissent sous la brise. Uh, lovely. Uh, trembler convulsivement. Um, so basically to move with a little rustle. Yeah, to vibrate. Yeah, frémir is like a, like a little movement. To tremble convulsively. Yeah. Ok. Notably under the effect of a, a strong uh, emotion. Yeah. Uh, frémir de honte, to shake with shame kind of thing, all right? So basically, uh, in other words, and papille is taste buds. So it says it makes the taste buds tremble, quiver, all right? Lovely. Back over to the connaught. So, uh, pour sublimer des, des plats, à faire frémir toutes les papilles. So to make all taste buds To, to delight all taste buds. So, in other words, if an analogy, if an expression doesn't work in French, uh, in English, si cette expression ne marche pas, si ça fonctionne pas en anglais, si ça se dit pas, it's not something you'd say, then by all means use an equivalent. So, it makes, it delights taste buds, it tickles the fancy of the taste buds, whatever. A force de passion, through passion. Now, a force de is an expression that I'm going to be talking about in a video very soon, alright? So, a force de and uh, a function, uh, um, faire en sorte que. If you've not had a video on that in a week, could you please remind me, somebody? Uh, de constance et de talent, les tables du Hélène de Rose at the Connaught font aujourd'hui partie des plus. So, um, font aujourd'hui partie des is very useful because if you took out the aujourd'hui, which is just saying today, and if you acknowledge that font is in the plural, and if you acknowledge that day is because what's coming next is a plural noun. Your basic bitch expression there is faire partie de. That's your highlighter one. That's the thing you should notice, yeah? They're not always going to come to you in neat, easy form. So it's basically saying, um, uh, we find in the kitchen the celebrity chef Helen, uh, double starred, you know, um, or you know, recipient of two Michelin stars, as well as her team, which who, who are inspired by regional products and um, seasonal products to basically um, make the most of, or, you know, or really whatever, delight your, tick tickle your taste buds or palate, whatever. Through her passion, uh, consistency and talent, the t Helen's tables at the Connaught today are part of the most reputable in London or, you know, the most reputed or, 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 or the most reputable in London or some of the most reputable in London. So you need to kind of change it. So you could, we could go on, but basically I hope this has given you, on pourrait continuer, mais j'espère que ça vous a donné, I hope it's really given you just an idea of how useful that video, that dictionary is. Do let me know underneath. Do start using it. Alors, dites-moi en dessous. Um, uh, just, um, just tell me how you're finding that uh, dictionary. I would find it... Re I would be really interested to know. Ça m'intéresserait énormément de, 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 de savoir ce que ça fait pour vous. So, am I saying I don't want you to use... Uh, you know, normal English-French dictionaries. Est-ce que je dis que je veux pas que vous utilisez les dictionnaires norm normaux? No, not really. Pas normalement. Pas, pas, ex pas exactement. I just like you to have a try with French-French dictionaries. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd like you to give it a little go. Allez-y, essayez. Voir ce que ça donne. See what it gives. Uh, pour voir ce que ça donne. Good, 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 good. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you're not subscribed, please, can you subscribe? I do drink coffee, as you can tell <laughs> by the energy. Um, do keep washing your hands with Corona. Don't be too frightened. Don't be too scared. Five out of six of us will be absolutely fine. Uh, one in six of us will need a bit of medical attention. And, you know, 
Let's just see what happens. Uh, keep washing your hands. Try not to cough over everybody. And by all means, do uh, do by all means treat me to a coffee. The link will be underneath. All right, guys. Take care and speak to you soon.